Oz. You think these people, these false, these false prophets today that push a prosperity gospel whose God is their belly, it's all about them making money, that they do these, their deceitful miracles and signs? What is it? It's a precursor to the Antichrist. It's that spirit that went out. It's anything that gets you off the gospel. Anything that gets you off this book and gets you looking for some sign somewhere else. Why? Because he's going to come with lying signs and wonders. So they want you to look for a sign. No, you look at the printed page. You look at the Word of God. You look at the King James Bible. You look here for your answer. It's all right here. You don't need that. You don't need those signs. You don't need those at all. Why? And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You go to a charismatic church, they don't care if you get saved. They're more concerned with you speaking in tongues and slaying you in the Spirit. That's what they're concerned with. That's what their goal is. They want to slay you in the Spirit. See, why do you got to preach about this? Because maybe you might know somebody that's in the charismatic movement, that's why. Maybe you might be out on the street if you ever thought about going out and preaching the gospel. Maybe you might be out there on the street sometime, and you might run across people like that. You going to have an answer for them? Or are they going to walk away saying, well, you're just not filled with the Spirit, and you don't have any answer for it? I'm going to start talking about a little bit of things here. This will be interesting to you. What they want to do is pop you in that, what they call the third eye. Now, they don't call it that. They call it something else. But, uh, but, but from Kabbalah and from Kundalini, what you see is from the devil, they want to open you up to a spirit world. They want to open you up to an antichrist. They want to, they want, I'm not going to hit you in the head, but, uh, but, uh, there's that penal gland right there, right? And they want to strike that there. And many have given testimony, which I'm going to show you, that when they get struck by that, there, there's like a light, there's like a, a, uh, a shock. There's like a, an electric, electric shock that comes through there. When they do that, I'm going to read you some very interesting things here. Now, it's not Manly Hall's secret teachings of all ages, Brother Russ, but uh, but it, it's it's not too far off of that. Uh, but uh, I, I want to read you something because I want you to understand something. What is this all? It's all the spirit of Antichrist. Where is it coming from? Well, I'm going to read you something that is exactly what they're trying to do when they pop you in the forehead, what they tell you. And I'm going to show you what what Hinduism says or what yoga says and what the charismatic movement says. And I'm going to show you that it's exactly the same spirit. Same thing. They want to do the same thing to you. They want to do what they are doing. They want to do that to you. That's what they want. They want to do that to you. So I'm going to show you what it is. I'm going to read something to you here from, from, this, uh, from this website here. He says here, if you wish to... Now, this is, this is from a, a third eye... Uh, spiritual world um, opening you up to this this new enlightenment, this new understanding. Oh, it's going to open you up to this new. You're going to see things that you've never seen before, and you're going to be sensitive to things you, you never. And you're going to be you're going to feel the spirit, and you're going to do all this. You know, I had some weird Baptists say a few things to me about after they got baptized. They were talking like that and saying that they they could see things that they never saw before. Moving right along. Listen to this. It's too real to make up, brother. The third eye is directly related to the sixth chakra, the psychic chakra, located on the middle of the forehead above the brows. It is closely associated with the penile gland. The penile gland is dormant in most people, as is the true third eye. French philosopher René Descartes believed the penile gland to be the seat of the soul. Ooh, it's going to get weird. Where mind and body meet. In the average person, the penile gland is atrophied or calcified. Probably saying that wrong, but calcified anyway, and dormant. The following exercise will change that. Please read this thoroughly, as much as the exercise I write of are very advanced and can cause problems if one does not do them correctly. Now, this is not a charismatic. This is the third, but I want to show, I'm going to show you what they're trying to do here. You think it's, you think it's not odd that Freemasonry has used being slain? Like Hiram Abiff, Brother Russ, you've talked about that a little bit, and I've talked about that. The same slaying takes place. The same striking takes place. All right.
Testing one, two. Hopefully I'm coming in clear here. I uh, hope I didn't say anything too mean while while uh, you're listening to the seven year older or younger me. <laughs> back back when I was a little honorier, I guess maybe. I don't know. Some people might say I am still. Oh, let's see here. I I had to have me spot of tea. Uh. Starting to like tea a lot. I actually kind of like it better than coffee. Anyway, it tastes better than coffee, I think. Maybe I'll get into some exotic teas. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what exotic tea is. All right. Any <laughs> anyway. Ah. Let me transition to the full picture here. Um, it's Minnesota weather. I have my flannel on. We're in Minnesota weather here. And uh, we are moving forward. And... Uh, Yep, I am healthier too. I I am healthier now than I was then. Although I did have a mean beard then. And my wife, you know, I think I told my wife. I think I told her. I think I told her. Oh, you were talking about the tea being healthier. Yeah. Yeah, tea is healthier, yeah. Yeah, it is. Jessica, you're right about that. That pumpkin, that pumpkin cold brew thing, that's evil, man. That thing is, I'm just telling you, that evil. Um, it's too good. Anyway, but I do like tea, though. It's it's good stuff. Um, what was I saying now? Oh, I think I told my wife that I was going to grow my beard out when it... When it hit freezing temperatures, but I don't, I don't know if it's hit down to freezing yet. So I don't know if I'm there yet or not, but I think I told her that, but she's listening. So she can tell me if I told her that I just, I don't remember if I did or I didn't tell her that that's what happens when you have a bad memory. I never used to have a bad memory now. I can't remember anything. In fact, pray for me because I lost my wallet. I I don't think I lost it. I think it fell out of my coat because I didn't leave it anywhere. And this is not the this there's never a good time to lose your wallet, but this is especially not a good time to lose my wallet. So I could use some prayer that uh That, that that wallet, that somebody mails it back to me. Or I find it somewhere if I left it somewhere around here. But I I will probably return to the grizzly beard. I need to grab my phone. Hold on a second here. You see, I wouldn't need my phone if this was a Mac. But since this is not a Mac and it is Windows, I have to have my phone. Somebody trying to sell me something. Let's see here. I'm just waiting for some people to get on, and we'll get started here. Let's see here. Oh, my goodness. Tell me that's not real. Tell me that thing is not real. Oh, my goodness. Is it two or one? What are you doing with that thing? That's 
Oh my goodness, that thing looks like a devil. What do you do with that thing? Look, I think my children found a possum. You know, that's the noise I heard in the garage the other night. Oh my goodness. What? Oh my goodness. Oh, those things are terrible looking, man. Anyway, so apparently my there was a possum in my garage. That's not good. Remember to tilt the webcam down, says Luke. Is my... Look. This is tilted down enough, isn't it? All right. So the top of the video frame is just above your head. Well, okay. It doesn't tilt anymore. That's it. It's all it's tilting. Sorry, kids. Whoa. Anyway, okay, well... I'd get rid of that thing, whatever it is, that possum. Okay. Anyway. It looks like a big glorified rat. Ugh. So, anyway. You need proper headroom. Well, is it right? I mean, it should be. It should be right, right where it is. Hey, YouTube just told me I'm live, and I didn't know that. All right. So hopefully everybody gets their notice. Yep, I looked at my wallet. Or I mean, I looked at my credit cards. Nobody's charging anything, thank the Lord. But I can't find it. I just do not know where it went. And uh, I don't want to have to order all those cards over again. I have protection on all those cards. I'm not worried about that. But I don't want to have to order all those cards again. And I don't want to have to do all of that in the peat moss. Oh, my goodness. I know I didn't have that, Andrew. I should have put that in there. But I'm hoping if they take it to the police, they can mail it to me. Or somebody, hopefully somebody will look inside there. They'll see my address and they'll just mail it to me. That would be good. That would be good. So I hope that happens. Anyway. Well, we got a lot to talk about today. I think Friday we'll talk about Kanye. And some other things. But today... We're going to get back into this Pentecostal series. I have a good book recommendation for you. Oh, yeah? What's that, Peter? Peter's got a good book recommendation for me. Maybe I already have it, but we'll see. I think I have more books in the Vatican. Um, Probably not, but. We're going to deal with today the Pentecostal heresies again, and we're going to deal with this seeking of miracles and baptism of the Holy Spirit examined. Because we started dealing with the, the first in them seeking signs and wonders or seeking um, experiences over, over the Word of God, accepting experiences over the Word of God. And, you know, it's very common for Pentecostals to do that. To not examine anything. 
For instance, all the people that are in this crowd, I want to show you this right here. All the people in this crowd, they're not asking where in the Bible is this. They're not asking where in the Bible is this. Right? What they're doing is wanting experiences in signs and wonders. So this is Tyler Perry with T.D. Jakes. Would, would you come tell what the Lord told you? check out I said you know I, I, I didn't have my checkbook when I got to Pastor White's uh, when I got to a uh, uh, woman that I lose the night before and Pastor White said you know write a check for $113,000 for those of you who can write a, write a check for $113 for Psalms 113 and I wrote a check for $113,000 and I admit my intention so why does he tell everybody how much money he wrote a check out for like what does that have to do what does that have to do? Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. Let me back this up a little bit. Well, it's fine. You haven't missed anything. Here you go. But. The was listen. to just leave the check and bless God. Because, see, I love to give. I've been a giver all my life. And when people have given to you and sown into you and God has touched them and given, given you favor. Because, see, when you have favor with. Come on, somebody. I mean, he is a good actor. See, they don't understand it where I come from. They don't understand it in Hollywood. But I'm going to tell you something about the blood of Jesus. All of my life, you know, my mother, she didn't have much to give me. She didn't have millions of dollars. She didn't have some legacy, but she had Jesus. And she taught me about that God. So I didn't even know that he was he was trying to build this youth center. I didn't even know it, but I know how important the youth are. So we were sitting in the service, and I leaned up toward him, and I said, I've just been touched to give a million dollars. So as... So when you got up here and you said a million dollars, I said, God, I don't know what you're doing, but I know I heard your voice. Man, TD gonna go nuts, man. He's like a million dollars. What? Whoa, he just hit the gazoon type button right there. He just lost it. Nobody's asking where in the Bible any of this is. Nobody's asking how this is. Nobody is comparing, like, why are you up there telling people um, what you're giving when the Bible says the left hand should know what the right hand does and things of that nature? Now, keep in mind, here's this here's this guy, all right? 
here's this here's this guy that actively dresses like trannies in his movies and all kinds of wicked garbage. No comedians can break through unless they break through the uh, tranny veil and they and they and the black man is dressed like a a woman and he acts like a woman and and they got to they got to go through that sodomite curtain. Okay? In order to make it big, they got to go through the sodomite curtain. How, how about the rock? He calls himself the rock. Same thing. Had to do the same thing. Had to effeminize those men. Had to turn them into little male prostitutes. Had to do it to them. I pray his anointing will stay upon you. I pray the power of God all over you. I pray his favor. I pray the blood of Jesus will come upon you right now. Keep you in his hell. God, I thank you for your blessings. Now, what he don't say is that's that million dollars that did that to him. Ain't got nothing to do with that slap in the forehead. That's that million bucks he just got. He's like, whoa. I mean, T.D. got a fat belly and all, but I didn't think he had no baby in there, did he? Huh? Drum roll, please. Never mind. Is it me or does that does that lady sound like Remember that remember that Looney Tunes character suffering succotash? Does anybody remember that? Does her voice sound like that guy? Su- suffering succotash? That's what that sounds like. Now, I will say this. 
that that move right there, I've seen that move before. And let me just remind you that that is the Hulk Hogan fish face. And it truly does mean that if anybody hits you over the head, you don't even bleed. That is the fish face. And you got the woman stalking the pulpit like she's a man, right? So basically, basically, you have a woman that's presiding over this entire meeting, which is that spirit of Jezebel. But the point is, is that here's the experiences that that nobody... that nobody wants to question. They don't question, like, what just happened there? There's no questioning questioning it. They take their experience, and they run with their experience. Because they're seeking, they're seeking a miracle, they're seeking some kind of miraculous thing outside of Scripture, outside of living for God. And they're, they're seeking experiences. So we're going to continue on with this. I'll have some other videos for you here in a little while that uh, will kind of explain the same thing to you. Um. TD did look like he was hulking up. I I mean, the fish face. And I mean, they don't care if the transgender dude leading people to hell. You know. Gets on stage and as long as he's got the anointing. Let me let me hang on a second. Let me. Uh, let's see here. We have As long as we have, let me see if I can get that in there. How come that doesn't let me do that on there? I don't know what the deal is with that. Anyway, somebody made me a picture of the Neutner, though. Maybe I go that way. This way. There it is. The Neutner. Right there. That's the Neutner. And as long as you have the Neutner, then you're just fine. You can do whatever you want. And, of course, if you have a million dollars, that always helps. Right? All right. Let's see here. I think I got another window here. Let me get back to... Nope, not that window. Uh, that window, maybe? Eh, it doesn't matter. That window. But that is the Neutner, right? That's who that is. 
So we are going to look at this charismatic movement further, and we are going to talk today about them seeking the, 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 uh, the miracles that Christ did. They believe they have an overemphasis on miracles. That's what it is. There's an overemphasis on miracles, on signs and wonders. And unfortunately, unfortunately, what ends up happening is that's all that is sought out. There's nothing else that is sought out. David Cloud says this, we reject the, and again, let me, let me uh, put me in the wide shot. You can order this book, wayoflife.org. Lots of good information here. This isn't the only sources I use. I use a lot of the, um, I use a lot of videos and other things that I, I will use to try to be a blessing to you and try to further explain different things, okay, uh, that, that kind of add to what's being talked about here. David Cloud does not obviously use videos in writing a book, so I add a bunch of video evidences and information and things like that in order to be able to explain things better. I think illustrations are good. Now, let me say this to you. Uh, tonight I'll be preaching a sermon here, and um, it'll be back in the book of Acts. And... I will be preaching on the star of your god, Remphan, and Moloch. And the star of David, the star of Moloch. I'm going to be talking about that uh, tonight. And I'm actually going to do a, a somewhat of a PowerPoint with it. It's nothing fancy because I didn't have time to put a bunch of it together. But it will illustrate the truth about that. So I, sh I don't know when Luke would be able to put that online. He'd probably be able to put it on sooner without the PowerPoints. But, um, and there's no video with the PowerPoints or anything. It's just, just those PowerPoints. But I will be teaching about that tonight, actually. Because we're in Acts chapter 7, and we're dealing with the star of their god, Remphan. And boy, did I uncover some interesting things as I was studying that issue out. Wow. Couldn't believe it. Lots of things there. We reject the Pentecostal charismatic movement because of its emphasis on the miraculous rather than on simple walk of faith. Look, you got people like Tyler Perry there. They live this amazing life, you know, of wealth and everything else. And what they end up doing is... That's not enough. Uh, the Christian life is not enough. They've got, to, they've got to do more than that. They've got to have more than that. And people are always seeking things except simple faith. The Pentecostals and the Charismatic Movement definitely emphasize the miraculous. John Wimber believed the miraculous is necessary for effective evangelism and called it doing the stuff. Remember that? Doing the stuff. They said, we got to do this. Uh, I want to do the stuff. Is what he said. And he was saddened when he went to a church. Right. And he didn't get to do the stuff. He wasn't too happy with that. I could list hundreds of books, says David Cloud, written by Pentecostals and Charismatics that focus on a miraculous experience, and commonly, the more radical and outrageous, the better. The Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship published many books and articles emphasizing the charismatic movement and the charismatic approach. One titled, The Happiest People on Earth, had a testimony that is typical after describing the glorious things that allegedly occurred after one couple was baptized in the Holy Spirit— 
One of them said to the effect, even if there's no heaven, this is so good that it wouldn't matter. See, they work them up in feelings. They work them up in feelings. And they get them all excited. Only that, and it goes nowhere. Besides their emotions and their feelings. But it'll get them give money and everything else. You know, here's the thing. When you're a servant of the Lord, people will either give money because they love God or they won't. If they have it. That's just the truth of the matter. I don't do any hoopla stuff in this church. There's a box over there in the corner and people slip their money and their gifts and whatever they want to do in there. And people mail stuff or whatever the case may be. But you know what? We don't. I don't do any hoopla. I don't play music for you. I don't play music to get people to, to put money in the, in the offering plate. I'm not saying that's a sin to play gospel hymns when people are given. That's just what people have done. That's fine, whatever. But I don't do it. He said, I picked up a copy of the book in a restaurant in Cody, Wyoming, in the 1980s. And at that time, my experience of Christian living was the very opposite of that testimony. I was sick, broke, lonely, and discouraged, said David Cloud. I was tempted to find a Pentecostal charismatic to lay hands on me so that I too could have such a glorious testimony at all moments of my Christian life. But when I prayed earnestly about the matter and meditated upon the Word of God, I came to my senses and remembered that God promises no such experience for the present time. Paul described the normal Christian life in Romans chapter 8. So let's go there. Let's look there. Romans chapter 8. Paul describes the normal Christian life. Verse number 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, by, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption to the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope. We are saved by hope. This is the normal Christian life, friend. Trials and tribulations and struggles, and sometimes it's not going to be your best life now. Sometimes you're not going to feel good. You're not going to feel great. There's going to be times where you might wake up and not have any joy at all for a while or have any, I shouldn't say joy, but happiness at all. It can happen. And you better understand that you've got to serve God even if you're not happy. You've got to serve God even if you don't feel good. You've got to serve God if you're in distress, in depression, in, in afflictions, in sufferings. You've got to continue to be faithful to God by the power of God. You continue on for him no matter how you feel. Because the temptation is to say, well, if I don't feel this way, it must be something wrong. Paul says the present Christian experience is one of suffering and bondage and corruption. Which refers to the indwelling sin in nature and the body of death. And waiting for the glory that is to come we will finally experience in many places. In Paul's epistles he says that. He describes his experiences. But they're not like the charismatics. Look. Paul doesn't describe his experiences. Let's see. Let me give you an example of this here. Hold on a second while I flip through this.
Paul doesn't describe his his experiences constantly as if they they are this this fresh fire of the Holy Ghost, this this falling down. Holy, 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 your temple. Let me get you. Let me get you where 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 Benny's putting the stuff on him, right? Benny's walking through with fresh fire here. Well, we've already talked about this fire, right? Benny sings him up. He gets him. He gets him going. By the way, Benny Hinn's still the same old wicked heretic that he's ever been. All right. And I'm gonna prove that. If I don't get to that video today, I'll get to that video uh, on Friday. But Benny Hinn is the same old wicked, stinking, rotten heretic he ever was. He's still doing this same mumbo jumbo garbage. I have a new video that I'll show you. Nothing's changed. Greatest guy on the platform. I think that's his wife. Hallelujah. He's still doing this same old nonsense he always has been. He's still preaching the same. Once an apostate like that, pretty much always an apostate like that. That's just the way that it is. And this, this show of people jumping up and down and doing all this stuff and getting excited and women don't know how to keep their legs closed and they're running around like this and he's 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 running the, 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 the mojo on them and everything else like that. What is all that? All that is a bunch of nonsense. Real life isn't isn't you walking around feeling like that, jumping up and down and in meetings and stuff like that and feeling the spirit so to speak ask him, ask him now. i'm telling you i've and seen this stuff in baptist man. churches too some of them you are Lift up and it's a bunch of nonsense is what it is now i'm not saying you don't ever feel good i'm not saying you don't ever have uh you know you don't ever have joy but what i'm saying is there's going to be times where you don't Life's not like that. Real life happens to people. You know what I've told people before? They make plans and they do things. They think it's all going to work out. And what they end up finding out is that real life changes some things. Life hits them upside the head and it changes some things. And friend, that's life. Paul described his own Christian experience in many places. We would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, and so much that we despaired even of life. That's in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. He lists all the experiences that he had. Let's turn there. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians. Let's go there. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Let's go there, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. 2 Corinthians. Eleven, twenty-three to 28, that is. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice was I shipwrecked. A night and day I've been in the deep, in journeyings, often in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in sea, in perils among false brethren, been there. In, in weariness and painfulness, been there too. In watchings oft, in hunger and thirst, in fastings oft, in cold and nakedness. Besides those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of the churches. See, that's life, friend. This is like an episode of Pentecostal WWE. Right? That's what this is like. That these people think and believe that you're you're going to always be happy. Look at this. Look at Rodney Brown here. Uh, Holy Ghost fire and training. 
So okay. he's got this he's got this fire and training, right, that he's gonna do. All right. I want Vision. you to close your eyes for a moment. What we're gonna do is gonna souls outside the four walls of the church. You're ruining it. Okay. The guy looks like he has like a child. But they think this is real life. Like you're gonna run around, and you're just doing this all the time, and everybody's ha ra, hoorah, and everything else. And that's not real life, friend. It's not. And he's over there waxing eloquently with the congregation, building up his offerings and his coffers there by making people think that you're always going to feel better. That you can always feel better, right? This lady, I recognize her. She keeps following us around. Jesus. She's been following us from country to country. Hey! And you too. This man keeps pestering me. Paya! Raka paya. Shopro combo. Randidanandidara. And like, what does it do? Absolutely nothing. But this is what they do. Other examples of the experience orientation among the charismatics are the writings of Dennis Bennett in the morning and the Holy Spirit in you, an Episcopalian priest who was influential. We talked about him in the founding of the charismatic movement in the early 60s. These books are literally filled with charismatic-style experiences that are offered as evidence of the reality of a spirit-baptized life. So what they're going to say to you is that, you know, if you don't have this, then you don't have the spirit, buddy. I've had these charismatics tell me that. They'll look at Aaron and they'll be like, why don't you get up and walk? Let me pray for you that that you'll get up and walk. Let me lay hands on you so you'll just get up and walk. What if God doesn't want you to walk? What if he doesn't want it? Then you won't walk. Paul besought the Lord thrice that he would take his thorn away. And God said, my grace is sufficient for thee. I'm not going to take it away. Another example of overcome by the spirit by the Anglican charismatic Francis McNutt. This book contains the experience of people who have been slain by the spirit. We'll talk about that sometime. Next week, probably. What you won't find in the books like these is a description of the simple and humble walk of faith. What does the Bible say? Is it this is it is it this WWE charismatic stuff? False miracles? The Bible says in Hebrews 11:1, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 2 Corinthians 5:7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Romans 8, 24, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. That's what the Bible says, friend. Faith or hope is the opposite of something that is seen or felt or even experienced. You mean, preacher, when my feelings are against my faith and try to tell me everything against what God's word says, I'm not supposed to believe them? No, you're not. When your feelings are good and they agree with your faith, it's great. But when they don't, it's not good when you trust them. 
Faith is waiting patiently for something that one does not yet possess. The believer has all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, is seated in the heavenlies with Christ, and has an inheritance reserved in heaven. But he does not yet enjoy all these blessings. We are waiting for them. We do not have kingdom authority because the kingdom has not yet come. We do not have perfect health because the resurrected body has not yet been given. You know, this this charismatic Neutner guy that just come on here, he's awful afraid of me. I wonder what he's so afraid of. I wonder why he's so afraid of me. Well, God will deal with him. God's spirit will deal with him for sure. Probably already is. That's why he's so scared. We do not live in splendid wealth because we have not yet been glorified. The Christian life is a life of faith, and that means we are patiently waiting for those things that God has promised even while we live in this present cursed world and in a body of this death. You see, we wait. We're not there yet. So what does that mean? It means that we're going to have a lot of hardships along the way. We're going to have a lot of trials along the way. We're going to have a lot of sorrow. Right? It's going to happen. But you know what? The Lord will see us through it all. And and we're not... We're not going to... We're not going to... Have that perfect peace here. Of no turmoil or trials. That's not going to happen here, friend. This life is a life of trials. It's a life of heartache and pain sometimes. And you and I have to remain faithful to the Lord through it all. Further, the Lord Jesus Christ rebuked the lust after miracles in the strongest terms. I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Verse number 38. Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered... And said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. God rebukes them for seeking a sign, for looking for some kind of sign, looking for some kind of miracle. And not true Bible faith. It's a difficult lesson to learn, but God teaches us that sometimes. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it. We talked about that. Matthew 8, 11. The Pharisees, or Mark 8, 11, sorry. Let's go to Mark 8. And the Pharisees came forth and began to question with him, seeking a sign from heaven and tempting him. And he said, and he sighed deeply in his spirit and saith, Why did this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, there shall no sign be given to this generation. And he left them and entered into the ship and again departed to the other side.
So the believer is not to lust after miracles. He's to walk humbly by faith. You and I are to live for God by faith and wait. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. So God has promised us deliverance from the wrath to come. And that's and we have to wait. We have to wait. We have to wait on the Lord. We're not going to be able to we're not going to be able to have that perfect joy in this life that we would like all the time or that or that I would say not the perfect joy but that the happiness and the lack of sorrow. Sorrow is good sometimes, and God's people need it. Sorrow makes the people of God more sober, more serious about the walk, their walk with God. Okay. Miracles do not produce faith. Multitudes witnessed Christ's mighty miracles, but only a few believed. Faith comes only by the word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Miracles, you say, God, I'd never doubt if you'd just do this for me. I'd never doubt. Really? Well, the disciples saw Christ rise from the dead. They were with him for three years. And they doubted. Simon, Satan hath desired to have thee, to sift thee as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail thee not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. You see, you can be shown a million things. God could give you, and God has. Honestly, the Lord has showed you and I many times his good hand upon our lives, hasn't he? And then we fall into doubt and fear. And then we doubt God's goodness to us. Then we doubt his grace to us. We start to doubt it. When something happens, when trials happen, when thoughts come in, when, when Satan oppresses us, we start to doubt the goodness of God. That's exactly what we do. See, you could be shown all kinds of those things. That's not going to build your faith. Right? And that's what you have to understand. That faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God's going to build your faith. God's going to make you stronger through the through through the word of God. And you have to understand that. It's not it doesn't happen by you seeing some miracles that come to pass. You seeing some kind of miracles that make you believe. not going to happen that way the miracles that the believers need to support his faith are found in the written word of god consider the following scripture turn to john chapter 20 john chapter 20 verse number 29 Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. So 
so these people they believe that that uh, these miracles can be done, and that they will see these miracles done. I personally believe that their searching only leads them into, into corruption and trouble. It only leads them into sin. It leads them to seek after things that they're not to seek after, that God never commanded them to look at, never at all. But that's what they do. That's what they seek after. There's the wrong emphasis There's just the wrong emphasis on miracles and seeking after miracles and not after Christ. We reject the Pentecostal movement charismatic movement because of the false doctrine that the messianic miracles can be reproduced today. Many have taught that Jesus performed miracles as an example for Christians to follow. I heard Pentecostal Larry Lee say that we need a red letter Christianity referring to the words of Christ in the gospels that are printed in red ink in some New Testaments. This idea ignores the fact that Jesus healed and performed miracles as a sign that he was the Messiah, the promised Savior, the Son of God. Jesus, now listen very closely to this. Listen, Jesus' healing ministry was not an example for us to follow, but was part of his unique credentials as the Christ, the Son of the living God. If we were to, if we were to duplicate those miracles, if that's what we were to do, if all of us could do these miracles, if all of us were to do these miracles, like Franco Stagno here wants you to do over here, that's preaching a false, uh, a false gospel over here probably, and trying to trying to spam this page with his with his charismatic nonsense. If, if God wanted us to do that. Then what would differentiate what would differentiate the ministry of Christ? Why was it so astoundingly different? Why were the apostolic miracles so astoundingly different than anything else that was ever seen? And if we were all to do the same thing and all have the same power, how would it differentiate? How would it? John chapter 5, verse number 36. You know what amazes me about you Pentecostals? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something what amazes me about you Pentecostals. You'll totally ignore every Bible verse that is put in front of you because you got a spirit in you. No, what you don't like is I ain't slapping you on the forehead and telling you what a great guy you are and that it's your best life now. That's what you don't like about me. That's what you don't like. You don't like the fact that I don't put up with that nonsense. I don't believe that false doctrine and that circus sideshow that you people do. And I will not accept your circus sideshow. It is against the scriptures. It is wrong. And I will not, in the name of being nicey-wicey to you, I will not accept your heresy. I will not believe your nonsense. John chapter 5, verse number 36. Christ differentiated his ministry above all else. But I have a greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. John 5, 36. John 10, 25. 
Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. John 10, 37 to 38. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, but if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. John 14, verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. John 15, 24. If I had not done among them the works which none of the man did, if I had not done among them the works which none of the man did, What does it say here? They had not they had not had sin, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Jesus differentiated his works from the works of others and that of the apostles. He differentiated the two. John chapter 20. Verse 30. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. You believe what's in this book, not what somebody else tries to tell you outside of this book. These scriptures leave no doubt about the purpose of Christ's miracles. Even the apostles could not do all of the amazing things that Jesus did, quieting storms and feeding the multitudes. And had they done the sign, the sign nature of Christ's, nat- Christ's miracles would have been rendered ineffective. If Jesus' miracles weren't amazing and they weren't set apart from everything else, then why were they such a sign to everyone? Why did they let everybody know that? Why did everybody come to that place of understanding that Christ was set apart of all other people? Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. This cannot mean that believers through the centuries would be able to do greater sign miracles than Jesus, because that would be impossible. He's God. What could be greater than turning water into wine, feeding multitudes, and walking on the water, raising the dead? Because those are the things that Jesus did. Jesus did not say that the disciples would do greater miracles. He said greater works. See the difference? Greater works than these. So what are the greater works? Whereas Jesus ministered only in Palestine. Sometimes they're miracles. But what would the, what would the disciples end up doing? They would preach the gospel to the whole world. That means the gospel would go forth. Jesus was just in Palestine. They would go to the whole world. Those were the greater works that they would do. Not greater miracles, not more money, not feeding 50,000 people. No. It was the gospel going to the known world.
I think some of the guys from the key are coming on here too. They they don't like me very much. So I get all the trolls on here. I, isn't it weird how this is that big of a deal? Like, why would these trolls come over here and just, like, pick on this message? It's kind of weird, isn't it? Hmm. Whereas Jesus wrote no books, the apostles completed the canon of Scripture. God's people have enjoyed the power to live holy lives in the face of a godless generation, to withstand the most searing persecution, and to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. God's people have continued to experience miracles and have done great works, but they have not done the messianic sign miracles. The doctrine that Christ's miracles had a specific temporal purpose refutes the Pentecostal and charismatic movements. So they try to, so we reject it because they try to say that you you can continue to do the messianic miracles that Christ did. Like you're going to be able to do these. Christ never said you'd do all those miracles. And when he spoke to his apostles and he said they would do signs and wonders, those were the apostles. Next, let's talk about the apostolic miracles. They say the apostolic miracles can be reproduced today. We reject the Pentecostal charismatic movement because of the false doctrine that the apostolic miracles can be reproduced today. The Pentecostal charismatic movement has taught that apostolic miracles should be performed by the churches in general and particularly by churches at the end of the age when the latter rain is poured out. Catherine Kuhlman said every church should be seeing the healings of the book of Acts. In fact, though the healing ministry of the apostles was unique and was for the purpose of authenticating their work. So what they're saying is, and we'll get into this here. You should be doing this stuff. (laughs) Rakapatala batala barita, rakatela de dia de nanando rodo, rakaparo. You see this lady right here? Now, they're claiming this is the latter rain. They're claiming this is the latter rain. Is the kid okay? Rakadanda, Rakadida, Rakadando do, Rikapeta, Lebeke, Papa Yeta, Paganamba, Parabapa, Papa, Pata, Para, Paradanga, Baraka, Supravundu. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Talk to her. Insults. Don't listen to cone-haired preachers who want to come and sit and rub their craniums together as the cones touch and impress each other with their great verbiage. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You can read the Bible or you can live it. Choice is yours. Did you hear that? You can read the Bible or you can live it.
Yeah, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting to switch that over. I just keep forgetting to do that. So we got the booklets. Come on, this is for a purpose. Drink, 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 drunk. Drink, drunk, drink, drink, drunk, drink, 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 drunk, drunk, drunk. Have a drink, sister. Hallelujah. 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 You look like the man from Fu Manchu. Come here, bring him up here. Step over here. Where are you from? What do you do? See, I don't know who he is. He looks like somebody important, like some kind of a movie star. Fire! Fill him, fill him, fill him, fill him, fill him. Fill, fill. Fill! Fill to overflowing. Fill to overflowing. Hey! Fill to overflowing. Fire! 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 Jesus! Sakapa, Praka, bull, prapa. Lady, 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 you, lady, lady, you, you, fire, fire, fire. Thank you, Lord. So basically, this is what they're saying that you should be seeking. You should be seeking this. Okay. So we're going to stop right here. And just for a second. And Franco, you sound like a charismatic whack job. And you're going bye-bye. See ya. Um, anyway, they like to infiltrate in here and they like to put their garbage on and try to, uh, try to teach their fake deliverance garbage. And it's not going to happen here. So I, I've been around enough fake Pentecostals that, that try to wrap themselves up as Christians and I get sick of it. Come on, this is for a purpose. This fire is for a purpose. What's the purpose? <laughs> this fire is for a purpose. You shall receive firepower. You shall receive firepower. You shall receive firepower. You shall receive power. You shall receive power. You shall receive. Here he keeps doing it over and over again. The repetition, the repetition, the repetition. Kapananga, panganine, bo, hey, saprovondo, minenderekepa, hete, levrobaka, mando. I can't believe these people do this with like a straight face. Okay, so the point is this, that the apostolic ministry, the miracles that they did, are not this garbage. No, this is not just a very extreme version of charismatics. This is what they all do, for the most part.
for the most part. This is what they do. All right. The Bible says of the apostles' ministry in 2 Corinthians 12, 12, Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. And let the record show that I'm not mocking Christians. I'm mocking the prophets of Baal. Mark 3, 14 through 15, And he ordained twelve that they, w- that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach, and to have power to heal sickness, and to cast out devils. Acts 2.43, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Acts 3.6-8, then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength that he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with him in the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. These were signs of an apostle. Acts 5.12 And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Acts 5.15, And so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. But Peter put put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turned him to the body and said, turned to the body and said, Tabitha, rise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up and gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive in Acts 9, 40 through 41. What are these? These are the signs of an apostle. By the way, we are not going to get to the baptism of the Holy Spirit today. So I'm going to take this off. All right, so then I changed that title there so we can do that. Then we have Acts 19.12. So that from his, his, Paul's body, were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Acts 19.12. And, when, and how about Acts 28.3-5? Let's go there. Acts... 28. And when Paul gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth him not to live. Suffereth not to live. Acts 28, 7 through 9. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So then when this was done, all others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed.
Every believer in that day could not do sign miracles. The only exceptions were a few men closely associated with the apostles and upon whom the apostles had laid hands. If apostolic miracles could be done indiscriminately by Christians in general, the sign would be rendered ineffective. If all of us could do those... If God had given that to every believer to do these signs and wonders and these sign gifts, if that was what God wanted every believer to do, how would it differentiate the dispensation, the beginning of that dispensation and the power? And how in the future, when we see the Antichrist come on the scene and the powers that he's going to have? Think about it. If I tell a stranger that is meeting me at the airport that I will be wearing a red hat when I come off the, of the plane, the red hat is a sign of recognition. But if other people on my flight disembark wearing red hats, the sign is destroyed. There was no general miracle working experience among the first churches. If there had been, Paul could not have pointed to his miracles as the sign of an apostle. That's what he said in 2 Corinthians 12, 12, that they were signs of an apostle. Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought for you. If all believers could have performed miracles as a matter of course, the brethren at Joppa would not have called for Peter to come and raise Dorcas from the dead. Why wouldn't they have just pulled up another believer and said, hey, you come and do it. You got it. You can do it. Peter's miracle that day was the sign of an apostle. Look at that in Acts chapter 9. Verse 36. I was just reading this today. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This one was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed... They laid her in an upper chamber, and for as much as Lydda was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then arose Peter, then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him, weeping and showing the coats and garments, garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up, and he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive, and it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that, as he, that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon a Tanner. Now, what's important about this is the fact that there were other saints there. Why couldn't they do it? Because the apostles were given that. And those that were closely intimate with them were given that. Nobody else was. The first church didn't go around doing that. It has never been God's will for all Christians to perform sign miracles and to heal everyone. It did not happen in the first century, and it certainly is not happening today. Don't be deceived. Don't seek that which God has not promised and thereby put yourself in danger of spiritual deception. See, that's the problem. People start to seek what Jesus has not, so they go to these people. I'm going to show you one here. Everybody said, oh, Benny repented. Benny didn't repent of nothing. Perito, hey! Parable! Rondo Morinanga. This guy's Rondo Morinanga. Meaning that God can use you in your sphere of influence. This is for everybody. Young people, older folk, businessmen, businesswomen, pastors, evangelists, whatever area to win souls to talk to somebody every day about Jesus. Who feels... How is this guy winning souls doing this nonsense? Well, I don't think I lump all Christians with this troll.
that God can use you to win souls. Okay, so obviously this is a 100% response. No, no, what I'm saying, what I'm, what I'm saying is that some places by this time of the night, it's already a longer service than what people have ever been in. Are you with me? We started at 8.30, 9.30. This is only an hour and a half into it. So I shorted it down so we wouldn't. Try not to overdo it. You know, it's people like you that give me a bad name. I, that's the problem. That's why this is controversial. I'm serious. Look at me. I'm serious. Can you ask them if they have, do they have electricity here in this place? Can you put lights on here? It looks like a nightclub back there. Can somebody put some lights on? Put lights on. I hate working nightclubs. Put the lights on. I don't like dark rooms. That's where demons lurk with intent. I like light. Stick the lights on. Amen. Can you believe it? Come here to a church, multi-million dollar mega ministry, and they're running like a $2 electric bill. And is falling, just like you saw today. There. Now you've got to find them and tell them see everything in pictures. So I see so what I'm trying the to river figure out as the greatest atmosphere. Of how that's the power of God, okay? But here's another one, Benny Hinn and some miracles here. And I want to show you this. Let's see here. There's a new one here. Let's see. Let me see here. Miraculous. Here we go. This is one week ago. Huh? I had a back surgery. And then the doctor did something and it left me with a Pardon? dry foot. I had back surgery and it didn't go well. And it left me with a drop foot. And I have to wear this brace on it. And I've been in pain for three years after the surgery. I've been wearing this brace ever since. <laughs> and I have an appointment. Pardon? I have an appointment with a doctor on Tuesday because they want to do another surgery. They all know they're not. See, people are seeking these things. And if you seek them, if you seek these things, God may give you over to these things. Look at that. Till I heal my children, and I, I, I'm like I'm standing, I'm like, and I just began. You deserve the glory, and that's why I switched into gentle shepherd, come and lead us, because I had no clue where to go. Because the Lord, the second He said, "Stop," I'm thinking, oh, Lord, I just began the service. He said, "Stop." And I went, I switched gears on you guys. I'm sorry. Gentle shepherd. I didn't even know it was the right key. I didn't care. Come on, people. Just lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus.
shake up your legs up and down. You were on the wheelchair for how long? Pardon? You've been using a cane for three months. The wheelchair, you use it to come here. Let's walk, dear. Walk down. Of course we don't see any of that, right? Of course we don't see any of those things. Come on back. Please lift your hands and say, I love you, Lord. Never to suffer that pain again. What an absolute joke. He just blew on her. Okay. If you, Jesus warned that an evil and adulterous generation seeketh the sign, and we shouldn't be identified with evil. We shouldn't be seeking these things. We shouldn't be seeking, seeking uh, these types of so-called miracles and satanic signs and wonders. I mean, remember, this goes all the way back to, to Catherine Kuhlman. Remember her? Remember her, her Is stuff? Is your husband here? Yeah. Well, call him. <laughs> come on. He's coming without being called. Come on. Come on. Come on. May I introduce you to two Presbyterian elders? <laughs> Did you expect this? No. Well, confess, confess, go on. Uh, I don't know what to say. You, you <laughs> really didn't expect this. No, we didn't. Sure. He messed up. We'd never have gotten here. <laughs> How many miles have you come? Yes, come here. Come here. Dear Jesus, I'm so glad for you, the power of the Holy Ghost that has gone through this body. I'm so glad for you. Oh, Donnie, the power that's on you, the power of the Holy Ghost that has gone through this body. Walk across there. Go on. Pick up your legs. Go on. Pick them up high, honey. Pick them up high. Just our elders and our ankle, the fractured ankle. So basically, we've seen this before with all of these people say, well, these are the extreme ones. OK, well, how about non-famous ones? Let's try that. Let's try some non-famous ones that are just out there. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. The one that I wish I had the one I had the other day. Oh, here it is. I think this is the one. As a sinner, I have learned. Oh, nope. That's not it. There's one that I, I saw the other day that I was just like, you've got to be stinking kidding me. Well, how about this one? So here's this. So, I mean, you know, is that is that really uh, extreme in that sense? Because. 
let's see. I'd like to find that video if I could. Man, I wish I would have kept that video. I don't know if that's it or not. Nope, that one's not it. It is on this page. Give me a second here. I mean, it, ultimately, it doesn't really matter because they're about all the same anyway. Dad, do you think that there's just one perfect person out there that we're supposed to find and marry? So they baptize these people. They baptize these people, okay? And then once they baptize these people, then they they scream tongues in their ears until they speak tongues. Like this. I've watched this I, I watched this church do this before too. With this Listen, listen. So if you seek this sort of thing, this experience, if you seek these experiences, you may find them. And you may find a lot worse than a phony tongue speaking. You may find some devils. You may get a hold of some devils, or they may get a hold of you. It is common for Pentecostals and Charismatics to misrepresent the non-Charismatic position on miracles, claiming that we do not believe in the miraculous. Michael Harper says, according to them, According to them, it is as if God is now paralyzed. He does not intervene anymore in our lives. His hand is shortened. These wonderful gifts. See, that's that's his book, These Wonderful Gifts, page 105. He tries to say, well, you guys don't believe in miracles. No, we believe in miracles. We just don't believe in your, your false miracles. We don't believe in them. And we don't believe in what you teach us as being filled with the Spirit is. We reject it. In fact, this is so far from what we believe that it's libelous. We believe that the Bible teaches the sign gifts exercised by Christ and the apostles were special and had a temporary purpose and thus ceased. But we do not believe that God's miraculous power ceased. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, forever. But he does not do exactly the same thing in every dispensation. He is not instructing men to build arks to escape a worldwide flood today, nor is he confounding tongues as the Tower of Babel, nor is he giving the law on Mount Sinai with lightnings and thunderings, nor is he being born in a manger today, nor is he dying for our sins today, nor is he coming uh, forth from the tomb today, nor is he shedding forth Pentecost with the sound of a rushing mighty wind, nor is he doing the signs of an apostle today because the work of the apostles was completed in the first century. This is not to say that God no longer does miracles. 
He has done great miracles in every century of the church age, which he is doing great miracles today. He is spiritually raising the dead and giving light to the blind and conquering rebellious souls by the power of the gospel. He is supplying the needs of his people, his churches, granting spiritual understanding and guidance to his people, healing the sick in answer to prayer according to James chapter 5. Granting supernatural power to those who are persecuted and oppressed and many other things. God works this type of miracle today, but the sign miracles had a temporary purpose that ceased with the apostles. We see the same thing in the Old Testament dispensation. There were only two great periods of of miracles. First miracles were done during the days of Moses when God confirmed Moses' authority to establish Israel as a nation and gave her the law. Second, the miracles were done during the early days of the prophets to confirm their authority to rebuke Israel and to complete the canon of the Old Testament scripture. The sign type of miracle was not done indiscriminately throughout the Old Testament dispensation, nor is it done throughout the New Testament dispensation. The doctrine that the apostle miracles had a specific temporal purpose refutes the Pentecostal and the charismatic movement. So, as you can see, with many of these, they teach a false anointing. That is not biblical. But people who seek a sign, people who seek a sign will seek that. People that want to feel something. People that want something extra biblical, that the Bible is not enough. They will seek after that. Why? Because God's word is not enough for them. They've said it. God's word's not enough for them. They need more. Like what what John Wimber said. John Wimber said that he wanted this stuff. That that's what he wanted was the stuff. And that Let me see something here. Do you spend the whole night shivering, piling on blankets? Wimber said, you know, he, he wanted the stuff. Let's see. I'm going to see. Oh, here it is. This is the one I want. Oh, this is the one that I did show you already. There was one other one I thought. So Benny says he admits he preaches a false, or he is preaching a false prosperity gospel, but then he continues on, uh, and he continues on teaching a prosperity, uh, or a um, a false anointing and healing. Best sleep of your life, guaranteed. See? This is literally. Benny believes you're the only one to be praised. You are the king of glory, the great I am, the king of kings, the lord of lords. Glory. Am I the only one that thinks that is extremely creepy? You can't carry it. Just stand right here. Oh, Jesus. 
Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Get up. Jesus. Stand right here. Forget yourself now and pray for him. Oh, Jesus. Your and I'm going to tell you what, I, I could show a lot more mainstream things from the Assemblies of God and all of these people that practice these things. The Assemblies of God practice the word of knowledge. They practice the tongue speaking. They practice the spirit slaying. And they may not go as far as Benny does, but they have practiced the same things in their general denominations today right there. If you go to those Pentecostal denominations, you will find that they do the same thing. So this prompts me to have another, when I have another teaching on this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and to the regular denominational Assemblies of God churches and Pentecostal churches that are out there right now that aren't the big money makers. And I'm going to show you they want to be these guys. And they want to do that. And I'm going to prove that that's exactly what they're after. That's what they do. So anyway, all right. Does anybody have any questions at all uh, before we uh, take off here for the day? I'm going to stop with that. Um, when I pick it up next week, uh, we'll add some more to it here about the charismatic movement. Um, or I might get into, whoops, or I might get into Halloween again. I might teach something on that. I don't know yet, but. Friday, I'm going to do current events and, and some of the uh, apostasy watch stuff for Friday uh, when I come back, Lord willing. Uh, that's what we're going to do. But just want to find out if anybody has any questions or comments or anything like that here. Um, sad to say, a lot of people that listen to these, they don't know what's said by the trolls on here and things like that. And I guess they get bored and finally they leave. Or they, or they only have so many fake accounts that they can use, and and uh, then they're done. But, um, you know who, who really knows? But, um, but anyway, uh, what are your thoughts on Adam's family and Joker? Well, they're both from hell. But I haven't. I've looked at the Joker issue, and obviously, the Joker is the. Um, the Joker is he's one of the tarot cards. He's the fool. But um and uh the Adams family, well, yeah, that goes way back. So uh but all dark and occultic, that's what it's for, that's what it's about. Uh and that's what they do, so unfortunately. Uh that's what movies are about today. So, um, Friday, I want to talk about Kanye, and I want to talk about uh, some apostasy watch things with you and uh, look at some of those things. That's, there's plenty of apostasy there. We'll probably deal with some LGBTQ issues, and you know, we'll deal with some of the others. I have a feeling this charismatic one, it makes a lot of people mad. I mean, some people that used to listen to me uh, that got mad. Um, like this guy here. Who? Mm, let's see here.
No clue why so many people come on here and are angry, but they are. Uh, Friday should be 11 to 1. Should be. We'll see. Friday should be 11 to 1. Uh, but we'll see. I heard about the, the yeah, I heard about those. Do you think Kristen Ricci and Winona Ryder are wicked actresses for dressing in black and wearing pale makeup? That's not even a serious question. Yeah, I heard about the $4,000 shoes with holy water. I've heard about that. I have heard about it. It's it's pretty dumb. But anyway. Well, so be praying for us. Pray I find my wallet. That would be good. I'd like to find it. <laughs> Lord willing. Uh, but um, and then it shows up somewhere. But pray for us about that. Pray for us about our upcoming trip. Oh, I got my trip planned. So here's my here's my plan. Uh, we are gonna go. We are gonna go to the Smoky Mountains, and we'll be there for close to a week in the Smoky Mountains. Hey, Mike, I'm going to be coming back through the Chicago area on, I don't know if it's a Friday or a Saturday. I wonder if if, uh, if you could meet up with us and our family to eat uh, eat some pizza. I'd like to go eat some Lou Malnati's over there. So maybe we could meet up on that Friday or or Saturday, I think it'd be, I don't think it'd be Friday, maybe Friday night, but uh, maybe we could meet up and go to, uh, go to Lou Malnati's or something, man, that'd be good to eat some, um, eat some Chicago style pizza. Um, then, but yeah, this weekend we'll be preaching at the, at the uh, Anoka night parade. Anoka Night Parade. So, um, praise the Lord. Pray for us. And, uh, yeah, Mike. Yes. Uh, if you don't have my phone number, I'll text you so you can get a hold of me so you have it. Or, actually, I've got your email. I'll email you my number, and then you can you can get a hold of me. Um, but, yeah, I'd love to meet you when we come back through. Absolutely, for sure. Oh, Chicago-style pizza is the best. Uh, I've been to – we have one here in, in Minneapolis. Um, but I want to go to Lou, Lou's if I can because it's. It, I think it's a little better than the other one. So, Carl, you don't even understand, man. You don't understand what Chicago-style pizza is, but it's the best. You don't, you don't understand, man. It, it's good stuff, though. But absolutely, that would be that would be a blessing to be able to do that. So maybe on our way back, we'll be able to do that. Anyway, for all the haters out there, by God's grace, I'm still here. And you could be still mad, but I'm still going to preach the word of God, and I'm still going to help the saints of God with the word of God. And by God's grace, we'll continue on for his glory. And all you're going to do is just keep me moving forward. So anyway, um, your little annoyances are nothing. Like little peons. I've had real enemies and you just don't chalk up. I'll tell you that right now. Um, Anyway, but, uh, yeah, I'll be up at Anoka this Saturday and next Saturday. Anoka this Saturday and next Saturday night. Or, actually, Saturday night for the parade this week. The following week, Saturday during the day, we'll be there. 
So we're not leaving though until my vacation's not my vacation is not going to be until um, three weeks from now. Three weeks from now. So uh, so you pray for us to have a good time and we're going to enjoy ourselves and get a much needed break. All right. Anyway. So we'll we'll uh, probably let you go here, and I gotta get, I gotta go work out, and um, get some get some uh, exercise here before tonight. Guess I'm two hours late. Yeah, you are. Where you been? Anyway, but uh, so we'll see. I think it'll be eleven to one. Is what I'm gonna do. On Friday, I'm just I'm not a hundred percent sure yet, so we'll see. And God bless you all. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for the gifts and um, thinking about our church and thinking about our needs and everything. Thank you for all that, and thank you for the nice emails. Got a good testimony. Uh, got got a testimony from. Um, uh, From Carl, uh, from his his future wife there, and uh, that was a good testimony of her being saved and what the Lord's doing in her life. And we thank God for that, Mary. We thank God for that, and um, we rejoice in that for sure. And yep, Minneapolis time, eleven to one. Yep. I'm glad the teachings are a blessing to you all. I hope they continue to be. All right. Well, listen, I'm going to get off here right now. God bless you all. Have a good night, and we'll talk to you soon. Oh, I'll uh, be looking for the teaching on the star of Remphan, the star of David. That'll be coming uh, probably tonight. I'll upload that. So anyway, God bless you all. Have a good night.